Welcome to Outside the Box, our music and arts online show. Let's see what's inside the box. Coming up, Don Martin talks of life, music and sings a song. Peter McVeigh sings his new song. Jeweler Ruth McEwen has a lot to chime about. Jacob Stockdale tackles Logie. And actor Dan Gordon swaps his hatchback for a hatchback. So, Dom, you're first up today. Thanks for calling in to see us and outside the box. Just the sound of you strumming away on that guitar there. Goosebumps. <laughs> Thank you very Unbelievable. much. Unbelievable. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having on me. It's, outside it's the here. box. Yeah, it's, and I used to, used to get away from the wife and kids at home. It's, it's great right now. <laughs> so I'm doing us all a favour by being here. At you know? least you're honest. Yeah, well, you've got to be. Yeah. Uh, Dom, you've been playing uh, for, for quite some time now. But first of all, tell us, why the blues? What attracted you to the blues? It's a, it's a great question. I mean, as a kid listening to all sorts of different music, my dad always had the LP player on. Um, but when I heard the blues, it was uh, Pink Floyd, the metal album, Seamus the Dog, you know, and they have a dog that howls and, and they're playing sly guitar and harmonica and stuff and piano. And I, I, I just, I, something just, I could identify with the music, the rhythm of it or something like that, you know, and as I got older and older and older and <laughs> older, um, just diving right into it back to the 30s and, and Robert Johnson's and all, the, all those guys and, and Howlin' Wolf and, and just mm -hmm. Freddie King, you know, Rory Gallagher from... Ireland as well, uh, were just huge influences on, on me and, and shaped me as a person, really. Uh, escapism, I think, yeah, okay. was from the blues for me, you know. And, and people, it's blues music, it, you know, it, in people's minds, it's like a sad thing. But for me, it's like happiness, you know. Makes you it happy, makes me up, happy. Up, up, uplifting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's an incredible sign, it oh, really yeah, is. Yeah. And Dom, you've been gigging throughout Northern Ireland and indeed Europe as well. You've, yeah. you've been right around Europe. I mean, I got really lucky because for years and years I was going around all the bars in Belfast trying to get a gig, you know, going just going into the bar with my guitar and saying, can I have a gig here whenever? And everyone said, no, 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 no. And I, I got one gig at Madden's Bar on Berry Street, you know, just around yeah. the corner. And uh, I played there once a month, you know, and this went on for years and, and that was the only gig I had and I didn't know what to do and, and I got really lucky and I, I went from playing one gig to playing in Russia and playing in Europe and going to places like Switzerland and, and in my wildest dreams I, I never thought I would get out of here alive, you know, so <laughs> I, I just, uh, just incredibly lucky and I, uh, I found management, I knew it was going to be management mm -hmm. that, that got you further, you know, and uh, from uh, Red Pepper Promotions I, I met Fenton completely on the off chance from playing an open mic night and playing uh, a radio, a local radio show that he seen mm -hmm. and, and heard and was like, I want to work with mm -hmm. this guy. So we, he got in touch with me and uh, from there we were just, we're just building it up, you know. And Karis Matthews, she's Karis, a big yeah. fan. Uh, she um, endorsed you a, a hell of a lot, didn't and she? And from Karis, I think we, we jumped over a lot of hurdles. You know, we should have been playing for like 10 years before we even got noticed by the BBC in England, you know. And uh, a lot of people were like, how did, you, how did, you, how did that even happen? Mm -hmm. you know, how did you get on B national BBC radio, radio two, you know, with Karis Matthews? And uh, I was like, I don't know. I, uh, it was partly because of Cormac here at Redbox. He, he said to her about me and she listened to my album that, that Cormac produced, uh, thankfully, because uh, he did a great job. And she loved it. And because of that, she, she got in touch with Fenton again. And, yeah. and from there, uh, we went over and, and did the, the show with Karis, which was brilliant. brilliant. I was like so nervous. I'm even nervous now doing this, but it was like, uh, it was just so beyond what I, uh, you know, comprehension of just yeah. playing in a pub to go on, here we are on uh -huh. this and yeah. doing it. You know, it was crazy. But it crazy. just goes to show you how you can change so quickly as well. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't forget where you've come from mm -hmm. and where you can go straight back to, you know, in, yeah. in a matter of an hour, you know, so you've got to just take every chance you get and just have fun doing it mm -hmm. because that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, you know. About and you've got a forthcoming album, we'll be looking forward to hearing that I, soon, hopefully. I'm working on it, yeah, I mean, slowly but surely, I want it to be, I want it to be good, you know, I mm -hmm. want it to be, uh, you know, because the first album is good, but it's, the, it's really the follow-up album that, mm -hmm. that matters the most, yeah. can you still do it, you know. And I, I think it's going to be, the, from the material that I've got and the stuff I'm working with, it's, it's pretty good, you know. Mm. So I'm, I'm fairly confident in, in playing all my own songs, you know. Well, we're about to yeah. hear uh, one of the tracks off the forthcoming Hi. album. What's it called? It's called Playing Blues on the Bay. All right, okay. Well, listen, in your own time, Thank you. take it away, Don Martin. Be 
people say I'm a crazy man Hide in the shadows They never met this man Took all I have to give I ain't got nothing left Stand back from me Unless I show my teeth All your love inside You gave it away Waves can take the pain I'm playing blues on the bay Don't come round no more Don't wanna see your face There's no other woman Could ever take that place So much left unsaid And I wish I could change Playing blues on the bay
what a sound, what a voice. Thank you. Playing blues you. on the bay, <laughs> Don Martin. Thanks Don, thanks much. for calling in to see us. I really appreciate us. the time, you know, thank you so much for, for letting oh, me be here. Okay. And so, uh, next on the show, we're going to bring a little bling. And now from NI Silver, it's Ruth McEwen Lyon. Ruth, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Abe. How are you? You're busy there. Uh, um, so, you make jewellery. I do. And from design right through to completion, your one stop shop, right? Absolutely, yep. So, you tell me what you want, and I will make it for you. And some of your jewellery on display here is very impressive. Thank uh, you. Tell us how you got into it. Um, I lived in Malaysia for three years whilst my husband was out doing tsunami disaster relief. Um, and because I couldn't work, I ended up doing a little jewellery course out there. Um, and then I brought it back to Northern Ireland when we moved back here. And turned it into a business. Turned it into a business, yeah. So this right. is not what I did um, before that. I was a project manager and administrative officer before. So Bit of a change. Absolutely. So it shows you can have a career change in uh -huh. midlife. <laughs> but something you enjoy immensely, clearly. Yeah. Absolutely love it. So it's, it's great meeting people and actually just making things for people that remind them of Northern Ireland mm -hmm. or Ireland. And via the website nisilver.com you sell worldwide. Absolutely, yeah. It's all online so it's very easy, especially with all this Covid stuff going on. Uh -huh. So it's nice and easy for people to order. And, and we should say that a lot of your jewellery, in fact all of it, is inspired by Ireland and Northern Ireland. Yes, we have a little piece for each of the six counties. Um, so wherever you were born, wherever your children were born, where you got engaged, mm -hmm. anything that will bring back a memory for you is what we are all about, making memories. Fantastic. Well listen, I would love to have a go, is that okay? Absolutely. Yes, I will get you making something shortly. Maybe cufflinks. <laughs> um, I'll look forward to that. Um, something for everybody here on Outside the Box. Now, some sport. Yeah, thanks very much. Well, tonight, Logie's Live. A man, listen, who doesn't need too much of an introduction, but I bet they give him one anyway. 73 caps for Ulster, 33 caps for Ireland, 18 thrives. The one and only Jacob Stockdale. Jacob, it's lovely to be here in Logie's Live. Thanks for coming in. No, no, cheers for having me on. Now, I want to ask you one wee thing. It's great whenever you're running down the line and you're scoring tries against the likes of the All Blacks or England or anybody, but you're injured. What's it like when you're injured? Are you really out of the bubble? Once you get injured, is that you replaced? I've often heard sports people say that. Yeah, like it is, it definitely is, is a tougher part of the, you know, of, of professional sport. Um, I'm pretty lucky that it's a pretty short term injury it was well it started very short term and it's kind of <laughs> dragged on a wee bit but um I'm it's an Irish injury sort of short term then get longer yeah, yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> but um no like yeah for the guys who you know who are not as unfortunate and kind of get those big like six nine month injuries like you know it can be really really dark like because your schedule completely changes you're not training alongside the rest of the team you know, you're just in the gym, you're doing fitness sessions on your own and like, yeah, you know, it can get pretty tough. Luckily, I haven't had to experience it for too long and I'm hoping that I won't have to experience it for too much longer. Like, but. A lot of people watching, uh, like myself, would never know what it's like to put on an international jersey, you know, young lads, young lassies. What's it like? Do you still get a thrill when somebody hands you the Irish jersey? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's... It's like it's a constantly changing and constantly evolving thing, you know. When you get your first cap, it's like this dream come true kind of thing. And then, you know, when you kind of start to get, you know, 10, 15 caps, you know, for Ulster, it, you, you start to feel a bit more comfortable and at home. And then, you know, once you're pushing like the kind of 50, 60, 70 cap plus, which is kind of where I'm at now, I'm starting to feel like a bit of a senior player, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I don't even know what the lads with like 150, 200 caps feel like, you know, they probably feel like they've had it forever, but yeah, you, you still get the same thrill every time you put it on, but it's probably in a different, in a different sense, you know. Can I take you back and ask you, <clears throat> can you explain what was it like, can you remember your first one? Talk me through it, do you get a phone call, do you get an email, do you get a tap on the shoulder, what way is it done? Well, uh, for my first Ulster cap, it was, it was pretty simple. Um, during the Six Nations period, so all the Irish internationals were away, and uh, Rory Scholes had been starting ahead of me, um, and like I didn't really think I was in with a chance of getting a cap, and then he tore his quad in one of the games, and all of a sudden there was an opportunity for a winger to play. So yeah, Les Kiss, I think it was just on the Monday morning, came to me and was like, "Look, 
in this team meeting I'm going to name you um on the bench um you know well done like you you've earned it and that was that was pretty much it um you know and then trained all week with the team and, and flew out to to Italy to play um got I think eight minutes off the bench didn't touch the ball but uh, it's still a good experience you know did you always want to be a rugby player did you always did you always aspire to that was there anything else you wanted to do um yeah like there was there was a few things that I always want that, that that I wanted to do rugby was always this kind of this pipe dream that never really seemed realistic like I wasn't brilliant at rugby like growing up and uh like in school and stuff I would have been playing for the seconds and thirds played for the fourths a couple of times as well at Wallace and yeah it never really was a career a realistic career choice until I was probably in kind of upper sixth at, at Wallace but um but yeah like I wanted to be I wanted to be a pilot actually um but I wasn't able to because I have a condition with my eyes so that was ruled out and then I wanted to be a lawyer but realized that I wasn't probably smart enough to be it so uh yeah there was a few <laughs> other career choices but they were um they're quickly wiped out so they were you talk about career choices you know seven tries and that uh, six nations way back in what 2018 was it mm. 2017 uh, that was an incredible you know you just arrived on the scene what an explosive arrival you must say yeah it was like and um, actually funny enough i was thinking about that today um and thinking that i probably made it hard for myself uh you know like like i kind of i was pretty fortunate it was the perfect storm in a certain sense, like uh, that I had kind of got myself into good form and burst onto the team. Um, then the team themselves like had come into really good form, and we were playing some of the best rugby you know Irish rugby's ever seen. Um, so you know when you you put all that together, like it creates a scenario where you know international rugby seems pretty easy. And I think because of that, now moving forward, everybody everybody expected a lot from me. Um, which has at times been been hard to kind of keep up with, I guess. You've enjoyed it all. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it's been like there's been the tough parts, like without a doubt. But I've really, really enjoyed you know every part of it up, up until now, anyway. Jacob, thanks very much indeed. Really appreciate you. No Join worries. us here in Logie's Lives. No worries. So I'm back with Ruth from NI Silver. Ruth, and now I'm going to get a go. Absolutely. What do you want me to do? I want you to produce a little thing like this that says, I heart you, I love you. So we've got our little stamps here and okay. our little hammer. So if you can take the stamps, yep. keep the letters towards you, hold it nice and square and a and just give it a good sharp punch. stamp on the top. Yes. I love you. And what's this going to be part of then? This is going to be part of a wind chime, which I'm trying to make for um, mental health reasons, really, with this COVID thing. Right, okay. Because signs now are um, helping people just to feel a lot better about things. Of and course. hopefully the chime of this will be gorgeous for people. I love That's the great. sound of Lovely. a wind chime. Yeah. How's that for you? That's brilliant. Super. Well done, you. I love you. Now, yeah. I did notice um, yes. a little claret jug here, and there yes. is an association with yourself and golf. Yes. I Tell used to play that. golf quite competitively when I was in Malaysia and also in England. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously when the Open came last year, I just thought I would try and make something for that. So the money that we raised for the golf, I used to teach the expat ladies in Malaysia, was used to pay for things for the orphanage for right. the children out there. So it's actually, there's a whole big link, you know, with the whole golf thing. I'm a bit of a golf nut, to be honest. Is Coming from Hollywood as well. I was going to say, is there anything you haven't done? No, I'm a bit of jack of all trades and master of none, to be honest, but I love trying new things, so anything like that. We'll be from Hollywood, hopefully Rory McIlroy will be watching. Uh, Here's and, hoping. Um, a little Clara jug <laughs> on the way to him. Uh, Fantastic. And so lots of jewellery, um, wind chimes. Yes. You know, what else do you make? Um, I make anything, basically, that you want, but my main part of the business, which has obviously stopped for COVID, are the workshops where mm. you would actually come and make something yourself. So anyone can come along any age um, and do a wee bit of stamping, a bit okay. of cutting, a bit of soldering, you know, whatever. And what is want. this that you're doing now at the minute? I'm just heating this little heart here, which is going to just be a special um, colour. Okay. I love the colour of fire on metal. Yeah, and so the heat turns it a different colour. Yes, so this one yeah. will go kind of coppery, all different types of copper, a bit of blue, a bit of green, a bit of yellow. Okay. And then when I plunge it into water to cool it down or quench it as it's called, 
um, it will just all bring those colours really alive. So you'll mm -hmm. see one piece on the wind chime at the end. Okay. Um, so you can see the end product, basically. That's quite a nifty wee blow torch you have there. This is a creme brulee torch, believe it or not, oh, but it? we use it in the jewellery trade for little things like this. At home, I would have um, an oxygen acetylene torch that I would use for my bigger pieces, but you can see how bright that goes. I can see that. It looks so if I kept hot. this torch on, that would eventually all turn up into a little ball, which mm -hmm. is quite a cool thing to watch because it looks like the moon, you know, with oh, all okay. the landscape changes and things. And with the heat, it's easier to bend and shape if you need Absolutely. to. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Well, that looks fantastic. We're going to uh, come back to you to see the end result. We're okay. looking forward to that. Now to one of Northern Ireland's finest actors, it's Dan Gordon in a very fast Lamborghini with Liam Cray in Stars Cars. Welcome to Stars Cars, where we take stars out of their everyday cars and put them into something just that little bit special. I'm here with one of the most sensible actors in Ireland, Dan Gordon. He drives one of the most sensible cars in the world, the Volkswagen Golf. Dan, why do you drive a Golf? Well, I, I'm just very practical, just for being from East Belfast and the son of a shipyard man. Um, I travel a lot, I tour plays. Uh, I would be working up and down in Dublin and uh, touring around Ireland. So I do quite a big mileage during the year. Um, a Golf is very practical, very reliable. Four doors, hatchback and a tow hook. It doesn't get any more practical. Four doors tow bar and hatchback, and it's everything that I need. And it's a 1600 diesel as well. Not that I'm doing major, major miles, but it's enough to kind of keep the cost down on the running as well. Um, but just a very comfortable car. What have you been doing of late? Oh, well, I've been confined to barracks, but I've been very lucky because I write from home, so I've been continuing with that. Um, and I've done some television work, all been socially distanced. Some of it has taken much longer than it should have because of the, the whole protocols. Um, but I've been kind of sitting on my laurels as well because I had a short film that I did uh, last year called Ruby. And afterwards, we can take a nice wee walk on the Strand. Oh, it always rains. And uh, it has been touring festivals, so even though I'm sitting in the house, I'm working because it's been playing online and so on. And BBC showed it recently, a beautiful piece, a real pleasure to be in. And Kate O'Toole uh, and myself play a, an older couple, um, and he has bought her a present for their Ruby wedding anniversary. Uh, it's not the kind of present that you really would want. And uh, we, we won some awards around the world, and recently, just a couple of weeks ago, we won an award in Barcelona for Best Actor, Joint Best Actor, and uh, I was delighted to see that. So I've been kind of keeping myself busy. How about peace and quiet then? I can do that. Now, if I was to say to you, you could have any car, the car of your dreams, what would it be? Well, you see, again, being practical, um, but also, the word Lamborghini always impressed me, because it was Italian, because it was cool, so ciao and all of that bella. And uh, if Lamborghini had a practical car, I would be interested. Dan, you're in luck. Dream sequence. Hey Dan, I've just made your dreams come true. A practical Lamborghini. My own fairy godmother. A hatchback, just like the Golf. Black, just like the Golf. It's just a practical car. 160 grand. And there's no two bar on it. Do you really need it? I will. I put my bike on the back of it when I go inside. Here, let's get in and have a drive. You'll change your mind. All right. I can't believe it. I love it. You need it. Right. Okay. I kind of be expecting to tap on the shoulder from the pillars. There's pictures of stuff here. I don't know what they are. <laughs> So there's a, there's a thing here on the other side when we go that says Anima. I don't know, it's turned into some sort of animal. It says Strata Sport, Corsa, Sabia, Terra, and Neve. And Neve is written as little. It might be some kind of film. I don't know the. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it. I think Jeremy Clarkson is very safe in his job. <laughs> so you need a degree to be able to drive one of these. The upholstery is very fine. It's uh, the yellow stitching and very soft. It's probably, dare I say it, Bambi. Uh, what I really like it though is it, it's not shy about saying it's a Lamborghini. It's a Lamborghini written all over the place. It, just in case anybody's not sure that I'm driving a Lamborghini. I wonder how the horn works. Oh, that's working. Works. Cabin doors the manual. <laughs> that's me away.
It's like driving an Ulster bus. <laughs> We're up on real high. Oh, this is good. This is good. I do like this. Really, I just know. It's like the cockpit of an aeroplane. Or all those buttons do. It's like the James Bond thing. What does this red button do? Whoa! Out the window. Oh, it's a double sunroof. Oh, there we go. Sunroof up. Oh, sunroof up and open. Oh, look at me. <laughs> I wonder when you stop worrying about the price of the thing when you're driving it. I suppose if you worry about the price, you shouldn't be driving it. And then there's a thing there that says boost. I wonder what that does. It's probably rockets. The bottom of the wheel is flat. It's not a completely round wheel. That's an innovation. I've never seen that before. Oh, that lets you know what bits the bottom. See, this is what the Queen does as well. The Queen doesn't have to drive though, again. Okay. She's just step down. Imagine doing delivery in one of these. <laughs> Delivering Chinese's on the weekend. You wouldn't mind. Well Dan, what are you taking home? The Golf or the Lambo? It's a tough decision, but I think I'll take the Lambo. Here, you can have the Golf. Oh, cheers. I know a fella will fit me a tow bar. I think Dan Gordon enjoyed that Lamborghini a wee bit too much. Dan, if you're watching this, any chance of a Lambo bag, please. We're back in the studio. This time we've been joined by local singer-songwriter Peter McVeigh. Peter, how are you? Good, good, man. Yourself? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. And so, thanks for dropping in to see us here at Outside the Box. And you're probably glad to get away from homeschooling for a couple of hours. Definitely. I'm, I think I'm up to scratch my maths and English at the minute. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. I was learning about the Vikings last week. <laughs> I went the very basics of P1 stuff where I probably belong, to be honest. Yeah, well, uh, it's a learning experience for all of us, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Um, so, let's chat about you, your singing, songwriting. How long have you been doing this? Probably about 15 years, although I think I've been saying 15 years for the past four <laughs> years to people as well. I, I can't really keep up the time generally as I get older. But yeah, about in between 15 odd years, uh, I've been singing, songwriting and releasing music as a solo artist and yeah. then moved into this band. And you're a well-known uh, face and name across Belfast. Uh, right. You've had lots of residencies, including you were Dean's for... Eight, yeah. eight years eight was years it? years in Dean's restaurants, uh, playing the nice background music for anyone that was in getting their, their, their grub. Uh, you'd have heard me, definitely. Yeah, and most musicians maybe start off in a band, then go solo, mm. but you've taken a different approach. Yeah. Uh, this past while, so my first uh, albums that I released were all sort of solo albums and things like that. Um, and I had three, three solo albums and an EP out, and then Got a wee bit bored of that, to be honest, and, and uh, I always I grew up sort of really enjoying Travis uh, as a band and just reached out to some of the guys, Andy from Travis, and asked him if he wanted to start a new project together. And no way. Yeah. This is the new project, uh, St Alban. As easy as that, wow. Yeah, weirdly it was. Uh, there's there's a, 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 yeah, doing it. Sometimes there's, there's a nice wee uh, moment where you go, ah, I just want to try something else different, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad I sent that tweet now. Great, great. And uh, through lockdown, you've been putting pen to paper, you've been busy, uh, and you've actually written a, a song quite recently, which we're going to hear mm -hmm. a, in a while. Tell us about that. Yeah, this one's called Peace. Uh, I think after the, the capital gets stormed in uh, America, Andy had wrote like a, a wee verse, a wee poem uh, that sort of read like a, a prayer, uh, which was, uh, whether as hate, let us douse the flames with love, etc., and sort of countering all the, the negativity and just trying to write something nice and positive at a time when things weren't looking pretty great. Yeah. Uh, and we thought, well, maybe we could make a wee song out of that. And that sort of led into our very first soul vibe song uh, that we were going to release and put out for charity. That's brilliant. Hopefully, you'll raise lots of money for that. Hope so. Uh, well, uh, we'd love to hear the song. Cool. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll let you take it away. Cool. This is Peace. Let us douse the flames with love Where there is anger Let us soothe the pain with calm Where the violence spreads Let us 
Absolutely brilliant, beautiful song yes, thank you, man. and beautiful message. And we should say that the guitar is actually older than you. Yes, it is. It's hence about three years older than me. The war mark. But listen, <laughs> still sounds amazing. Peter, thanks for coming to see us in the outside the box. Cheers, thank you, man. Right, let's go and see how Ruth's getting on. So Ruth, I'm back again and we're going to finish our wind chime, yeah? We are indeed, yes. So now you're sanitised, we're ready to rock and roll. What I want you to do actually Abe, is to pick up the little um, rusted heart down there with the jump yep. ring and use the two pliers and just attach it to that chain. Okay. If you can do that. I'll do that. And Ruth, uh, you were explaining your, you've got your family, your husband Steve and your daughter Sophie yes. uh, involved in the business, haven't you? Yeah, so Steve does the, um, he did the website building and he does the social media and the photography for the business. And Sophie, who's 10, does the, when we hold the workshops where people come and make their, you know, make their piece of jewellery. Uh -huh. Sophie teaches the children how to do the hammering, a bit like Brilliant. what you did earlier. So she loves that. And you're keeping your husband so busy. Jump, yeah. Um, yeah, so Steve, dear love him, he's um, been tortured by me to take pictures of products and, uh -huh. you know, to send pictures off to people. So there's a wee ring just on the Where left is it? hand, it's on the left hand side of that. Oh one. yes, yeah. I see it. Okay. So if you can just attach that. And this is the final touch. And to here's hoping that our this... wind chime. I want to take this home with me. <laughs> 
Absolutely, I could hear that blowing in your back garden now. So if you hold that up, it should jingle, I hope. Oh, it does. It does. That's the dangle, so you're holding the leather bit. There you go. And a wonderful sound. That's it, just to make you chill out, hopefully. Ruth, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on Outside the Box. Don't forget. Thank you very much. Um, nisilver.com yes. to go along and have a look at some of your jewellery. Yep, and when COVID's finished, people can come along and make a memory themselves. That'll be great. Yep. Well, listen, uh, that's all we got time for. Uh, thanks to Ruth and all of our guests. And join us next time on Outside the Box. Mm -hmm.